Welcome to Strange Weekly News. In this show, we'll be taking a look into the news and headlines to pick out curious reports of the strange, the weird, and the mysterious. Anything from UFO news to science advancements, the paranormal, and stuff labeled fringe science and fringe phenomena. Each news item we go over in the show, I will put all the links to them in the description box below once this live show is over, as well as chapters on the timeline index. Welcome to all of our first time viewers and listeners and everyone in the live chat. John aside, Jessica, Chris, Kurt, how is everybody doing? Brown Dwarf, thank you everybody for coming here, liking the video. Thanks to all my amazing mods. Before we get started, I would like to mention that on Tuesday, my guest on Shifting the Paradigm, we had Kelly Chase talking about everything regarding the UFO phenomenon. Then on Thursday, on Mysteries with a History with Jimmy Church from Fade to Black Radio, we covered Atlantis really a fascinating topic. And just a quick announcement, for those who like to chill with ambient space music, I started a new channel just a couple days ago called Cosmic Portals, where I have posted some of my music tracks already and another one today as well. And I will be posting more soon. So please check that out. A little bit later, I will put it in the live chat, that link to the channel. Well, today is Weekly Strange News, and I have my wonderful guest co-host, Mr. John Russell. John, how's it going, my friend? Hi, Christina. It's always great to be here. We have a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to tonight. We've got some strange stuff to cover. We have some strange articles. You have some stories as well. Ah, yeah. you know I love talking to you, John. You, you, you bring so much fun to this channel. So let's go ahead and get started with the... A kind of interesting and popular article in our kind of UFO paranormal community. And that was the UFO sighting that took place in Wisconsin. Right. So I'm just going to share an image here as a visual aid while we go over this article. So while I pull that up, John, give us a little rundown on this. Well, you know, people are seeing these unexplained lights. And this is a phenomenon that continues to occur. It's, it's not isolated. People are continually seeing this type of thing. And increasingly now, our government is beginning to backpedal and say, oh, these were lights in the sky that were reflections from the ground or originating on the ground. Maybe they were searchlights or spotlights. Maybe they were car lights. And then, of course, they have resorted to the, uh, the old standby uh, hi, Puck. <laughs> They've resorted to the old standby that it's uh, uh, weather balloons, which we talked about last time, or debris floating through the air, or whatever. And it seems like after the disclosure report, the little small disclosure report that we got, it seems like the government has begun to backpedal and backpedal and backpedal and begin to denigrate every type of sighting and every type of thing and begin to explain everything away again. It's it's like we're back in the swamp gas era. But, you know, so many people have seen these lights in the skies. I've seen these lights in the skies. I've had these UFO sightings myself and under conditions where I knew that it couldn't be anything but a UFO. And so a lot of these people are seeing the same thing and seeing these lights in the skies, photographing them, filming them. And then, of course, the uh, the government now and the skeptics are trying to come up with all kinds of excuses as to what these things are and are not. And uh, I don't understand all the big backpedal on the UFO thing all of a sudden, but it's it's really crazy. And I really would like to emphasize that there is a huge difference from being a skeptic and being a debunker. I think skeptics are great. You need to have a critical mind. You need to ask the questions. And especially if, if, if you're seeing something weird in the sky, you're going to attempt to rationalize it first. Is it drones? Is it an airplane? Is it something that I can explain? And then when all those check off as no, then you can lean into the okay is it ufos but exactly. when but when some people are coming in st giving all of these excuses mm -hmm. not not anything else as other than pulling stuff out of the air and giving excuses but not really doing the research into it that's what bothers me well, and, and, and i and i am not for yeah. it they're going into it with their minds made up 
And the debunkers go in with the attitude that there's nothing supernatural, there's nothing paranormal, there's no UFOs. They go into it with this attitude to begin with, and there's absolutely no way that you're going to change their minds. I doubt if some of these people literally uh, would see something with their own eyes, they would probably find a way to explain it away. It's it's it's, it's disappointing, and some of these yeah. people have have these kind of um, platforms or where they're able to influence others, stating, "Nope, I'm I am going to tell you how it is yeah. based off of what I think, but I'm not going to actually provide that information for you." So again, I think skeptics are amazing; they're important. We all need to Absolutely. be skeptical, Absolutely. but we. We shouldn't come in with the preconceived idea or have that confirmation bias, which all of us do. Don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. if you're aware of that, you can work against it more than work, yeah, work with it. it. Yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm one of the most skeptical. I'm a psychic and a paranormal investigator, as everybody knows. And I'm one of the most skeptical psychics there is. But the thing. <laughs> That's how that it I, should be, John. Yeah. And, and but the things that I, the reason I have the platform that I do and the foundation that I do as I have had way, way, way over 1,000 physical paranormal manifestations in my life that not only I've experienced, other people around me have witnessed and experienced with me. We've caught it on film. We've caught it on camera. We've caught it on audio. And so the proof is there. The experience is there. Uh, for example, when I shot the, uh, the uh, TV pilot for the History Channel, and after my portion of the investigation was done, then we had a reenactment crew go back and shoot in period costume for uh, the reenactment portion. And my producer told me that when they went to places that I had investigated and stirred up this paranormal activity, that the film crew was seeing objects move four or six inches on a shelf all by itself and all these types of things. So there is proof out there. There is documentation out there, but most people don't want to accept it. And then uh, one of the, the really tragic things, there's a, uh, a noted scientist, and I won't say male or female, I won't tell you who or where or anything else. I'll just say noted scientist that uh, I had asked to endorse my books. And they told me that they believed 100% in my experiences. The books were well written, but if they endorsed them, the scientific community would ostracize them. And so they didn't, they didn't want that. So this is the problem that we have going into research these things and to investigate these things. It's like you say, you have this confirmation bias, you have these debunkers, you have scientists that are afraid they're going to be ostracized in the scientific community. And, uh, and then you have people in the paranormal community that don't want to get involved with scientists. And so it's a, it's a, it's a real catch 22 and it's something we have to work to overcome. But yeah, uh, you know, it is uh, it is incredibly unfortunate, John. Yeah. Your camera keeps moving back and forth. I know, and it's not my camera. <laughs> my, I was like, what's going on? I don't know. My camera's stationary, and I don't know what's happening. A lot of the time, my guys, which under the umbrella term for my people on the other side, uh, a lot of times my guys will mess with electronics. And uh, that's just let me know they're around and they're goofing with things. But my camera's completely stationary and I, I see it vibrating on the screen. Uh, it got so bad sometimes that we would go to the grocery store, go to check out to pay for the groceries. And I would run my debit card through the reader like 10 times and it wouldn't scan. I'd hand it to my wife. She'd run it through and it would scan. And then She has the magic touch. Yeah. And then sometimes I fry remote controls. Sometimes electronics goof up around me. Sometimes the guys on the other side will get on phone calls that I'm, I'm making or on with clients and speak or make noises or do things. And a lot of times they'll mess with my computer. They'll start opening up blank windows and all kinds of things. <laughs> well, talk, talking about frying, uh, yeah. you have a very interesting story about a frying bus <laughs> you, yeah. and then, and then you left me hanging when you give me that piece of information. I'm like, John, you gotta tell us the story. This was a really neat experience. And uh, on the advice of my book attorney, I'm not saying who, what, where, when, or, or whatever, but, but I will tell you enough of the story that, and it is a legitimate story. Um, I had, uh, as most of you know, and as Christina knows, I like to drink. I've had my glass of bourbon on the show many times. And so uh, I had um, 
had a few drinks, gone for dinner. And at the time I was, uh, was taking a bus to get around and there was a, uh, a favorite bar that I went to is a restaurant, a bar up, upscale place, but they had a really neat little bar in it. And so, uh, I had gotten pretty well into my cups, gone for dinner, come out to catch the bus. And, um, it was a brand new bus, brand spanking new. They had just got it and it was really nice, nice air conditioning and heat and comfortable seats and good, good chassis and suspension and everything. And I knew the bus driver and, um, uh, I came out and approached the bus and the door was open. He was waiting for everybody to get on. And I came out and like I say, I was pretty well tipsy and I was feeling idiotic and in a good mood and feeling frisky. And this energy came rushing up through the ground into my feet, up my legs, out my body. And I looked at my hands and I just went <laughs> like that. And the bus instantly died. And the guy looked at me, the driver looked at me and he goes, what did you do? And I was like, Oh geez, whoops. What, what did I do? And I was like, I didn't do nothing. He said, you did something. He said it was running fine. It's been running fine all day. It was sitting here running great. You came up and did your little weird thing and it shut down. What did you do? And I was like, mm, um, nothing. I don't know. And so they had to call and have a tow truck come and get the bus and bring us another bus. And so the next day, I go out and there's the old bus and not the new bus. And I walked up and the, I, the driver said, well, thanks a lot. And I was like, what are you talking about? Where's the bus? And he said, you ought to know you fried the damn thing. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he said, I don't know what you did yesterday, but they came, they towed the bus into the shop. And he said, we put every mechanic we have on it, all the knowledgeable mechanics, all the machines, we put it on all the electronic analyzers and everything else. And according to the mechanics, the bus is perfectly fine. There's gas, there's fuel, there's spark. There's everything's great. The battery is fine. Every, all the electronics are fine. We put it on the electronic analyzer. It says that everything's fine. Everything's okay. But okay, Chris, that'll work. <laughs> but the bus will not start. It won't make any noise. It won't click. Everything has power. All the, the analytics, the electronic analyzation of it shows that power is going to everything, to all the systems, the mechanics say everything's working, but it won't click, won't start, won't make a noise, won't do anything. I was like, holy cow. So we do have the power to affect things, telekinesis to affect physical objects. I've affected other physical objects and I've sent energy and spirits to people at a distance. And they have confirmed that they have experienced uh, the things that I sent to them. So we have to kind of be careful <laughs> with this power. I've been very, very careful around electronics and things and various other things since then, realizing this is, can come about. So we have to realize when we develop these powers or experiment with these powers, we have to be extremely careful with them. And we can do some really good things with them. We can transmit healing. We can also, if we're not careful, goof around and uh, fry a bus. <laughs> Well, one thing, while I do love some good fried food, especially fried noodles, the Wisconsin Department of Health Services is telling people in Wisconsin to stop with their family holiday tradition of eating raw meat sandwiches. <laughs> Have you ever heard of these raw meat sandwiches, also known as tiger meat or cannibal sandwiches in yeah. the Midwest, specifically Wisconsin? Yeah. And when I was growing up, we always ate raw meat. We would be making, uh, making hamburgers or yeah, we would be making hamburgers and the raw meat would be on the counter like that. And we would grab some and roll it up in a little ball and salt it and eat it raw. And we did, that was one of our favorite treats when we were kids, when, uh, when either my grandmother or my mother was cooking with, uh, with ground meat, regardless of what they were making, we would pinch off a little bit of it, roll it up into a ball, salt it, sometimes pepper it and eat it raw. And that was a great treat. We never got sick, never got ill, never had a problem. So uh, yeah, that's, that's something that I've done ever since I was a kid. See, that information absolutely blows my mind. I saw a video on TikTok about like maybe six months ago now of a woman like stating, oh, what's a weird family tradition that you have? Mine is eating raw meat. And she just demonstrated on camera, just 
the same way that you described it, this woman did that. And yeah. I said, she's yeah. out of her mind. She's going to die right on the spot because you can get <laughs> salmonella. You can get all of these like weird bacteria in your stomach that isn't good for you, that it, can kill you. But a, so this, this article blew my mind that it is a family holiday tradition, meaning yeah. oh, that yeah. thousands of people do this. Yeah. But, and they're okay. And they're okay. Of course, yeah. there are a few cases where people do get sick. But overall, that's another very interesting piece of information that a lot of the people that are eating this raw meat, they're not getting sick. Of course, there is that small percentage. Um, women that are pregnant, newborns, right. Right. and those in their 60s and older kind of have are more susceptible to getting these mm -hmm. uh, terrible bacteria in their stomach. Right. But for the most part, no, that's not the case. And then I thought, well, you know, with the Japanese, they have sushi, that stuff is raw too, and they don't get right. sick. Of course, right. they do have a higher, um, higher statistic of stomach cancer in Japan right. than other countries. Right. Could it be because of the raw meat? I don't know. But for me personally, I, I can't, I can't stand cooking with raw meat. I can't stand touching it. I can't eat it. I just, <laughs> it, it bothers the, I love it. I everything love it. out of me. Yeah, I love it. And we had decades ago, and I'm so old, it's so bizarre to say that, but decades ago, we had one of our E. coli scares. And uh, I went to one of my favorite restaurants with my buddies during the day. And this old cowboy buddy of mine, uh, they had just had this huge scare and nobody was eating hamburgers and nobody was eating uh, any kind of ground meat or anything like that. And uh, so we came in, we sat down and, and I told the waitress that we all knew I said, uh, give me one of those E. coli burgers, please. And my, my cowboy buddy looks over at me and he goes, John, you're a bad man. <laughs> and I ate my, my uh, medium hamburger and enjoyed it, never got sick. And uh, yeah, but, but I ate, uh, ate raw meat ever since I was a kid like that, absolutely. Oh, no, no. I, uh... <laughs> it, it it blows my mind some of these foods that people enjoy like pickles and i know john we're talking about this uh backstage oh, that you pickles. love pickles to death pickles. i i cannot stand them the smell <laughs> the texture the flavor I, I can't do it i not only eat pickles i drink the pickle juice no Yes. <laughs> the one, so there are two things that blew my mind about pickles, and this is going to lead into our next article for those that are like, what are they talking about? It's going to make sense. But yes. there were two things that I came across that blew my mind about pickles. One of them, there is this thing as pickled snow cones where you put yeah. pickle yeah. juice on your snow. No. I've had those. They're delicious. <laughs> Stop it, John. But the second one were pickled candy canes. Now we are in the season the winter season the holidays yeah. christmas new years and that's the best time to eat candy canes but there was an article that we came across john yep. of the weirdest flavored candy canes one of them being pickled pickles but there are a few more and you can find these on amazon i screenshotted some reviews for for your pleasure and those watching as well but let's let's get into that so what are some weird flavored candy canes look at this ketchup sardine uh, pickle no. hot dogs mac and cheese caesar salad <laughs> according to uh, perpetualkid.com the Caesar salad candy canes are a little creamy, a little lettucey, and a tiny bit anchovy. Other flavors, bacon, butter, onion and chive, faux, rotisserie chicken. <laughs> it's so we're we're gonna um kind of read a little bit more of, the, of those descriptions, some of them. But when I came across this faux flavored candy cane. Now, see, I was you like, would try that. You would see, try that. I I was on the verge to press the buy button, right? Like I'm gonna purchase this for fun. They're sold out. Yeah. And I was like, oh, where's the ramen flavored? I mean, pho's pretty good. Don't get me wrong, I love it. The yeah, ramen, ramen is where it's at. Flavor. There you go. Right here yeah. is the Caesar salad flavored candy cane. Now, and see, I would try those because I love Caesar salad, so I would definitely good. try those. 
It was pretty good. So for those that need a super last minute Christmas gift or a stocking stuffer, you better jump on these websites for six candy canes. On average, it's about six to seven dollars on all these different websites. Uh, here's another one. This is the sardine flavored one, which no. I mean, I, I, no. I like sardines, but I don't know if I would want a sardine flavored candy cane. So according to candy maker Archie McF McPhee, the sardine candy canes were inspired by the stories that every Christmas Eve, Santa spends all night eating sardines straight from the tin while he flies around the world. <laughs> I have never heard this detail. I have never detail. heard that I have never heard that either. That's when it comes to Santa, things. because he's eating cookies all day. He's taking all the kids' cookies and eating right. those. Open Why cookie. does he need yeah, sardines? Yeah. That's bizarre. That's that's a new one on me. Yeah, I was like, um, obviously, I'm not in touch. And then here are the hot dog flavored candy canes and ball game food like hot dogs and hamburgers now come packaged as hard holiday candy. And at least if you bite into a hot dog candy cane you can buy these ones so this strange candy cane offers an ironic meaty and sweet taste of a summer barbecue to your wintry wonderland this holiday season and that came directly from their <laughs> website now, let me just emphasize that i did not write that because that sounds gross where you have uh, meaty uh, and sweet uh, <laughs> john explain exp why i tell you you know every year we see new and different weird candy cane flavors come out and obviously there's got to be a market for it because it keeps happening well so these ones are mac and cheese and let me tell you yes was it yesterday or two days ago i made the most beautiful bowl of macaroni and cheese with broccoli I love mac and cheese oh uh, it's it is it is the epitome of comfort food i yeah. Absolutely. love mac and cheese now would i try these mac and cheese candy canes i don't know but i i snagged a review on amazon you can find that particular flavor on amazon let me make sure this is the right one um because i have i have here it is yeah so here it says like it's sweet candy cane feel tastes like mac and cheese powder dislike Ugh. The smell is odd. It does not taste like a normal candy cane. No, duh. Uh, long lasting flavor and makes your breath smell weird. <laughs> okay. Uh, I believe I would be passing on the mac and cheese candy canes as much as I love mac and cheese, especially when they say odd combo of taste and smell. Right, right. So this one, it says the taste of these candy canes is sweet while it smells well, the smell is like mac and cheese. It's a very odd combination. I'm glad I tried it, but I won't be ordering them again. Just the concept of like sweet macaroni and cheese? Yeah. No. That's, that's pretty bizarre. That's pretty bizarre. Well, there are some other flavored ones before we continue. Here's that pickle one for you, John, there because you yes, yes, man. You like I'll pickles. Pick, I'll take those pickle candy canes, you bet. I love uh, dill pickle potato chips, too. Oh no. And then you have ketchup flavored. So ketchup. Uh, for me, for me, I like ketchup on fries and like yeah. fried food, but by itself, it's it's sweet but acidic. And yeah. that that kind of bothers me. Like, okay, John, and for those in the live chat, here's a question for you. Are you the type to put ketchup on top of your fries or on the side? On the side. That's right. That's right, yep. John. This is, this is why we're friends. On the side, if you put it on top, they're gonna be all soggy, yeah. and like some of them have too much ketchup, and no. some not enough, or some none at all. And then you got to root around in the fries and try and find the ketchup, and you get it all over your fingers. And yeah, See, long on the side, I am with you on that. Now, those listening <laughs> and those in the live chat, um, what do you have to say? XR says top. <laughs> See that that's the mentality of a serial killer of a psychopath that car. <laughs> Ketchup on top, no. Android, yes, on the <laughs> side and dip them. That that's the only way to do it. But mm -hmm. Nick says both depends what mood. 
So like I would never have a mood for I wanted ketchup on my fries. It's like no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Steve brings up an interesting point. Ketchup chips chips are delightful only in Canada, you say. So ketchup chips are pretty prevalent in the UK. They're prevalent in um, Mexico. And um, like what I mean by prevalent, I mean that it's common to have that flavored chips. Right. I've tried them. Because I love trying new snacks. Like, that is so much fun to me. And I, I personally, I don't like that sweet, acidic taste. Yeah. Not in a candy cane, I don't think. Especially not in a candy cane. Now, since well, we're, on, we're on ketchup, before we go off to something else, here's something else for you and everybody else in the chat. I have done this since I was a kid. I can make homemade from scratch one of the best marinara sauces you will ever lay a lip over in your life. No but way. I still like to use ketchup for spaghetti sauce. Mm -hmm. Who else? Butter, ketchup, boom, spaghetti sauce. Who else? Who else? Come on. Who else loves ketchup on spaghetti? Come on. So I, I saw that recipe and I thought people were out of their mind, but I came across that when, um, that Honey Boo Boo TV show was a thing oh, in the God. earlier 2000s, <laughs> yeah. right? So I watched that when I was younger, and they would put ketchup, butter, and skeddy, as they called it. And I'm like, are, are, are you trying to anger half of the world here? And be I surprised. can't believe you do it too. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people use ketchup for spaghetti sauce. There's a lot of people mm. that use ketchup for spaghetti sauce. Well, Zenza. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he 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 is he is with you on, on that one. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. so is Chris. He's like with you, John. Ketchup the barbecue sauce base or on meatloaf. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. No doubt. No doubt. Mark says I put tomato sauce on my spaghetti. There you go. <sighs> yeah. Guys, you're you're breaking my heart here. <laughs> like the the pain. The pain is real. <laughs> the pain is real. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Uh, to, 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 to each their own, right? I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, John, where where do you want to take us next with our next strange article? Oh, gosh. Let's see. Let me look through here and see what we've got. Oh, um, whoa, 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 where did it go? I want the one with the... Um, oh, well, let's talk about the, uh, the pair of super earths with thousand mile deep oceans. Oh, this this one is is super cool. I'm going to share my screen that's, here. So give us the freaky. rundown. Yeah, that's pretty freaky. You know, they're saying that they have discovered uh, these. Um, so the team led by researchers at the University of Montreal has found evidence that two exoplanets orbiting a red dwarf star are water worlds, where water makes up a large fraction of the entire planet, just like our Earth. Uh, these worlds located in a planetary system 218 light years away in the constellation, constellation Lyra are unlike any planet found in our solar system. And so they're saying that some of these super, uh, super planets, super um, water worlds may have a, uh, a um, atmosphere that is so hot that it's mostly a steamy atmosphere and not like Earth's. But they're also saying that there could be some of these water worlds that have a uh, atmosphere is very, very similar to Earth. So it could be an atmosphere very similar to our own. So that's very interesting. You know, the more that we discover about things out there in the solar system, uh, the more we should be amazed and the more open to things that we should be. And, you know, there's always been people that said, well, there couldn't be extraterrestrial life because... Uh, you know, it would have to be a carbon-based life form like us, and it would have to have, you know, atmosphere like, like we do to breathe. There would have to be drinkable water, the same type of water that we have. And that's always been the argument against extraterrestrial life. Well, with these planets out there like that now, voila, there you go. The problem solved. There's the atmosphere that carbon-based life forms could, like us could live on and exist on. But... As I've always argued, you know, people say, well, you couldn't live on Venus or you couldn't live on Pluto or you couldn't live on this, you couldn't live on that. 
well, that's us that couldn't live on that. Right. But we are looking at everything through people covered glasses. As far <laughs> as extraterrestrial life forms, we don't know what they need to breathe or what they need to eat or what kind of atmosphere they thrive in. They could thrive in 400 degree heat and drink some type of molten lava almost uh, that, uh, you know, that would, that would kill us. And so, you know, we go underneath the ocean to its greatest depths and we're finding all of these incredible creatures under there that live in basically inhospitable conditions, conditions that nothing else can live in. And there's fish on the bottom of the, the ocean around these volcanic vents and things that live in the scalding water and they're okay. There's other fish that live in this, this darkness and this blindness and this frigid cold down there and they're okay. So, you know, the more that we discover, we have to translate that into, oh, okay, there's all of these life forms on the earth and under the earth and under the ocean that can live in these extremely hostile conditions and thrive. Ergo, couldn't there be alien life sources out there, extraterrestrials, that can also thrive in, uh, you know, less than what we consider less than ideal life sources. So the more we learn, the more interesting it gets. And, and then again, you know, the, uh, the water planets, there's your answer for the carbon-based life forms being out there. You're absolutely right. And it goes to show that we're constantly being proven wrong. And yeah. that's not a bad thing. But the, what the issue with that for many people is that they bring their ego with their opinions, with the information yeah. that they find, so that when they're proven wrong, they're like, I'm not proven wrong. What do you mean? It's yeah. because they're taking it personally. But this information is absolutely fascinating. And the examples that you provided are incredibly accurate, where for such a long period of time, we believe that certain areas on our planet were inhospitable, nothing right. can thrive. But right. with the more advanced technology that we get year after year, we're realizing that life can thrive practically anywhere. Right. And, and that's so life that we know about on Earth that doesn't exactly. include life from other planets, other solar systems or whatever. And you were talking about science constantly having to change and admit being wrong. Stanton Friedman wrote a book about that saying science got it wrong. Uh, look it up on, uh, on Amazon. Stanton Friedman, the late great uh, a nuclear physicist and UFO researcher. Uh, the, the title of the book, I believe, is Science Got It Wrong. I have a copy of it. And, uh, and he says there's a numerous instances where science said, okay, this has to be this way because this, this, and this. And it wasn't. It was later proven to be wrong or completely the opposite or, or whatever. Uh, so, you know, it's a process of, it's just like with the paranormal, we walk in the light that we've got. That's and right. we extrapolate from that. And then we get to the point where our extrapolation is proven wrong. We have to accept that and go where the truth leads us. So it has to be the same way with all of these explorations and all the things we're discovering now. And we can't be afraid to revise our opinions and our knowledge and say, hey, you know, there's there's new evidence, new proof here. And we have to accept that. And that's what makes these discoveries so enticing, so interesting, no matter what field that you're interested in. Of course, yeah. you know, if, if you're interested in the UFO phenomenon, great that this information is perfect for you because it goes to show if some skeptic comes along being like, no, aliens don't exist. You're like, at this point in time, it, practically we're in 2023 now. You've yeah. really got to roll your eyes at that. You're like, really? At this exactly. point, are you, are, are, are you joking? So... While this, while we just briefly covered this article, I will place the link in the description box below for those that want to read it in detail, because it's pretty darn cool. It is interesting, yeah. It really is. Uh, moving on to our next one, and you know what? Let, let's kind of stay in the UFO area, and that is the UFO experience at Arizona Boardwalk in Scottsdale asks, are we alone? And they created a new attraction, everything related to UFOs. Yes. So I'm going to I'm going to share an image here of pictures taken from inside of the attraction. Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. Let me pull it up because it's, it's a few. It, it just opened not too long ago. So if you're in the area, should go check it out while it's still clean, right? Yeah, really. 
<laughs> so it says here that about 80 million Americans believe UFOs are real and 10% have reported seeing one personally, which yeah. is a, it's a probably a higher percentage than that. Oh, I'm sure it's so, going to be way higher, yeah. Yeah. And um, with this, in Arizona, as we know, that's where the Phoenix Lights took place mm -hmm. in 1997, there seems to be this um interest in ufos and we can see that in almost every state but i guess here in particular they're having this extra peak of interest in scottsdale arizona yeah. so the ufo experience the newest attraction at arizona boardwalk in scottsdale explores reports of ufos alien abductions extraterrestrial depictions in hollywood and more it's already uh an attraction that is attracting crowds of the alien curious as well as gung-ho enthusiasts in fact the first person through the door at the official opening on december 13th wore a full latex alien head throughout the exhibit i love that i really <laughs> love that it's uh <laughs> it's interesting it is, probably yeah. probably really hot in in that mask especially since arizona is just desert you know yeah. but i guess in december it shouldn't be too too hot but still like just wearing that for the whole exhibit kind of intense <laughs> you know it's really great that we have things like this that the people are opening up and trying to look it's an entertainment type thing but people respond to entertainment and that's where that's sometimes right. you can grab people and get their attention and then bring them into a deeper interest in something so uh, I, I think it's really great that things like this are, are uh, cropping up. And now if we can just take that and move it even further into, uh, you know, some uh, some real exhibits of some real things. You know, I always wonder what happens to things. And of course, the government hides a lot of stuff. I know that. But I remember Stanton Friedman once made the statement, and I'll paraphrase him here, but I won't lose his intent. He once said that there's an embarrassment of riches of physical evidence that UFOs have landed on this planet. Physical evidence. Stanton Friedman made that statement numerous times. And um, the, the day that I'm just chomping at the bits for is when they would bring all of that evidence together and then open up a place like that where we could go and see what has been collected and what has been, uh, you know, uh, analyzed and so on and so forth. So. But with our government backpedaling, it's going to take us taking names and kicking asses to really, <laughs> <laughs> really try and get something done like that. And when it comes to this topic, I think entertainment is very important. While you, you have two camps when it comes to this, oh, UFOs shouldn't be entertaining. It shall be all about the facts. I agree. But at the same time, if it's just facts, you're only going to get 1%, maybe 0.5% yeah. of people yeah. interested. But if you make it enticing, if you make it fun for exactly. everyone right. you're gonna get more people on board so while yes this attraction's making money it's 20 dollars a ticket to enter and yes they they are adding all these fun little attractions in place for people to take pictures it's still opening their minds Absolutely. it's still it's in, still allowing them to be things, imaginative and it, it starts acting on your mind and you say hey I want to find out more about this. I'm going to research more. About exactly. This. It just it just takes one event, one person to speak to, one movie, one book to open exactly. the doors for exactly. your mind to go on your own journey looking into this. And well, look what Close Encounters of the Third Kind did, that movie. You know, look exactly. how many people that touched and affected and got interested in the paranormal. Well, or same with drugs, John. And I, I tell people, I say, as far as the entertainment value, I tell people I, the, the books that I've written, if I just sit out and put a dry set of facts out there, nobody is going to enjoy reading that book, including me. I had to, to replay my emotions, my reactions, my thoughts, and I had to couch it in such a way that it was writerly or you're not going to read the darn thing. So there mm -hmm. has to be some entertainment value in everything that we do. And I look at some things on TV, some documentaries, that would be really interesting if they weren't presented in such a dry way. You know, they're just presented in such a, I, I just either want to go to sleep or turn it off or whatever. It's like, God, you know, could they find a different narrator or a different, know. you know. <laughs> and, and it's so disappointing because those documentaries that are full facts are 
incredible. That takes years yeah. of research to do. And yeah. while they feel like they're giving the the field a a a service, mm -hmm. right? The majority of people are looking at these things to be entertained and yes, be educated, but yeah. first to be entertained. That is the, t that is the purpose of creating documentaries, exactly of creating that. TV shows, of well, creating like, public attractions. Yeah. Have you watched uh, David Politis' new one, the myth and horror one, the UFO connection? I am going to watch it this weekend. I am. I've, I... I've watched it several times already so now. Excited. And both of all of his documentaries that I've watched are absolutely nail biting, uh, just edge of your seat type of stuff and absolutely engrossing and just make you think and make you wonder. But they are presented in such an entertaining way that you're drawn into it and pulled along with it and you enjoy learning what's going on. Exactly. And, yeah. So I've, I've watched all of his documentaries. I've watched Missing 411 the hundred a jillion times. It's amazing. And I've just watched now Missing 411, the UFO connection, and it goes way down the rabbit hole. Ooh, I'm I'm so excited. I've I've heard mixed reviews. Some saying it's good. Some saying it's okay. I haven't seen it. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna review I it like afterwards. It. I, I think it's I think it's very well done. I think it's good. Uh, like I say, as, as bizarre as things got in Missing 411, The Hunted, this goes way further down the rabbit hole, and it has things that are absolutely mind-blowing, uh, some of the experiences that the eyewitnesses have had with UFOs and things, the experiences they've had, it's, it's bizarre beyond some of the things I know about and have, have seen and read and, and so on. So it, it's definitely worthwhile. I recommend it. Okay. I I mean I've I've been planning it for a week to watch it, but I'm actually taking like winter courses right now for college, right. which is like a four week. It's 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 a, a like a full semester class in four weeks, so it's like super intensive, and I just haven't had the time. But I'm gonna do it this weekend because I'm. There you go. I, I've been wanting break. to watch it. Take your I, break. Watch right? it. You'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. Exactly. Well, so another really interesting story that actually you have is relating a related to a haunted doll. Last week, you told us a story about Pig Pig, right. um, who is very much in the sense of cuteness as Puck. Now, right. Puck isn't haunted that I know of, but, you know Puck, of. <laughs> but Pig Pig is haunted. But you have another uh, really interesting story, and I would love to hear it. Yeah, this one was literally a doll, not not like a stuffy like Pig Pig or like Puck, but literally a doll and a very large doll. It was about two and a half, almost three feet tall. What? And um, that's tall. The, the way that we uh, that got this was, uh, yeah, the guys are going crazy with my camera right now. I love it. The way that we got this was um, we had my wife and I had seen a documentary on on a hundred dollar haunted dolls on TV. And we looked at each other and said, oh, we need a haunted doll. So we said, well, where do we find a haunted doll? So we looked online and, and Googled haunted dolls. And there's a ton of haunted dolls for sale on eBay. What? And so Is that even um, legal, John? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> and so obviously there's going to be a bunch of fakes in there. But, you know, if you do your research, you can find the real deal, the people that proclaim the real deal. So we uh, found this one and uh, researched it and I used my my psychic power to to you know delve into it and we said okay this one's the real deal let's get this one so the lady had this haunted doll and she said that it would move that the eyes would open and close by themselves and sometimes little sounds would come from it and everything I said all right we gotta have that one <laughs> so we we get the haunted doll and uh, she arrives and we unbox her and you can tell there is an, an entity a spirit there's there's energy in this doll living wait, in wait how, how can you tell back it up how how are you how are you able to tell that well with, with my psychic gift i could feel the energy i could feel the intelligence i could feel it coming from the doll. and then sure enough there would be times the eyes would open and close by themselves there would be, be little of the things that would happen and so on and so forth and so we were very very kind to the doll, the spirit in the doll, and I would play it music and we would talk to it and we would tell it how good it is and, and all of that type of thing. And uh, so one night I was, I had this lucid dream and the doll came to me in the dream and then kind of transformed her appearance into the spirit that lived in the stall, but still retained the doll's shape. 
And she said, you have been so kind to me and you've been so sweet to me. And I appreciate that, but you've kind of helped to release me and I want to go on now. I need to go on. So I'm going to leave, but I just wanted to come and say thank you and say goodbye. And then in my dream, she went up in this, this burst of flames and shot up into the heavens and disappeared. So the next morning I got up, I was telling my wife the dream. I went to my office and turned on my computer and I got an email from the lady that had sold me the doll. And she said, are you okay? And is your house okay? Because I had a dream last night, the doll came to me and went up in flames. And I wanted to make sure that you're okay and if your house is okay, that there was no accident or fire or anything or burned down. So there was two people, the wow. lady that sold it to us and me that got the exact same dream of the doll going up in flames. And then after that, there was, there was no energy. There was no, no spirit or anything left of the doll. You know, whatever was there left, but it come to say goodbye in the dream that way. It's nice to hear that while the doll was haunted, it was a pretty chill entity versus yeah. like wanting to kill you. Yeah. Oh, I've never ran into anything like that. And uh, I, I don't really, I'm, I'm really skeptical about things like that. I think people get, too much involved on the horror movie side of things and they translate that into the paranormal but i've never had a negative experience with it even the guy with the divot box uh that he admitted that was a fake that it was something he cooked up to Dang. Do, uh, yeah so well i know that um first off james thank you so much for the super sticker but john i know that when you were on shifting the paradigm with me where i interviewed you we actually spoke about people that believe that they're that ghosts or entities or even haunted dolls are attempting to kill them when yeah. in reality from your own experience and these mm -hmm. stories that you've been relayed that they're just trying to communicate right. with the living right. more so than like actually trying to hurt them or kill them yeah. and, and communicate with us a lot of times they have to get our attention and we're so closed off just like the comment over here in the chat well a dream it must be legit well it was two people had the exact same dream so to me that's pretty legit and people are so skeptical and so closed off that a lot of times when the other side is trying to get through to someone to give them some guidance and to give them some help and to give them some direction in life that person for whatever reason is closed off to that or ignores that or makes fun of it and so the other side if they are really intent on getting through to you will do something to get your attention. And like with the lady in the example that, uh, that I gave that we talked about before, uh, they opened up the cupboard in the kitchen and threw a dish across the room and it hit the wall and broke into pieces right beside her. Her interpretation is a ghost tried to kill me. And when she told me the story, I immediately knew that the other side had been trying to get her attention for some time and that they were just finally fed up and desperate and it's like, ignore this. You can't ignore this. And so that was kind of the thing that opened up um, her awareness and understanding. And I told her how to proceed with that from there to contact her guardian angel, spirit guides, whatever on the other side that were trying so desperately to communicate with her and to get through to her. And um, uh, she was able to take that and, and go on and then be, you know, comfortable with that. But most people's knee jerk reaction to anything paranormal comes stems from one of two things. Well, three things, actually. First, you have your religious upbringing. So any supernatural event that's not sanctioned by the Bible is satanic, demonic, malevolent, evil, whatever. The other thing is that, uh, you know, we have uh, a fear reaction to things that leads to uh, a misinterpretation of the event, like the lady with the plate. And so we, you know, we have these things that that are stuck in our heads that we, that's our default reaction. And then the third thing is I, it amazes me how many people watch the exorcist and think that's real and that it's representative of real life. Or they watch these so-called ghost hunters on these so-called paranormal shows and they go in to hunt a ghost and they challenge the ghost and the ghost appears and they scream like little girls and run. It's like, why do you do that? That's what you're there for. Or going in, you know, like how many of these things are titled, um, you know, in search of fear, the place of fear, we're going to hunt fear, we're all fearful, we're afraid. Of. 
what's there to be afraid of? You know, and everything's demonic, everything's scary, everything's gonna hurt you. Why would you want to be there if that were the case in the first place? Well, obviously it's entertainment value. Nobody's ever got hurt. Nobody's ever scared to death because they go back week after week after week and keep filming. So nobody was hurt. Hello, no ghost killed anybody, no ghost hurt anybody. So it amazes me though, how many people take that as reality or representative of the paranormal realm when it's not. And that's one of the reasons that I wrote my two books is so people will understand what it's really like to interact with the other side on a day-to-day -day basis and how that can be beneficial to you, helpful to you, even life-saving to you as it has been for me many times. And you can read those, all those stories in my books that are out. And by the way, for those that want to catch his books, you can find it in the description box below on his website. Uh, Deranged Lunatic, thank you so much. It says Merry Christmas to Christina, John, and the Merry chat. Merry Christmas. Thank Merry you. Merry Christmas. I want snow. More more snow. More snow. <laughs> hey, we're but, gonna we're gonna have low twenties here in Florida tonight with a wind chill down in the teens. Jeez, I mean for Brutal. Florida. Brutal, I, yeah. I'm feeling bad for the skunk ape. I hope they're going to be okay. I hope so. Uh, one year here, the giant snakes were freezing to death in the Everglades. Like what? when it gets, yeah, when it gets this cold, the giant snakes will freeze to death in the Everglades. So it gets cold in Florida now. It doesn't last, you know, by the in a week's time, we're supposed to be back up, you know, 60s, 70s, maybe even 80s <laughs> the day. But until then, we're going to suffer. <laughs> well, then that's probably the best time to go to Disney World then, when like nobody's there because it's so cold <laughs> and there's <be> no <laughs> lines. <laughs> I wouldn't want to touch anything metal, the metal rides or anything in this cold, because I went out a while ago to cover up a plant. And when I touched the plant, it was like touching a piece of ice. It was like, oh, my God. So, yeah, I, th I think I'll skip Disney <laughs> Roger, thank you so much. It says snow is heading your way. Gosh, I certainly do hope so. I, I snowmen, snow angels, snow fall, lo love it all. That rhyme too. Okay, moving on to our next article. This one, you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna share my screen here for this next article. John, oh, oh my gosh, where is it? Here it is. Is it this one? Yes. Okay, I found it. And I'm I'm, I'm we're just we're just gonna go from this image. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Pulling it up. Dun, 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 dun. It's fortune cookie. And it says, we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> so, you know, everyone, everyone has a cell phone. How many of those phone calls are spam? And how many of those phone calls are calling you about your car's extended warranty? Exactly. So exactly. many. Well, so many. finally, after years of being harassed by these scammer calls, we're finally getting some justice, John. Yeah, it's about time. Right? It should have been a lot sooner. It should have been a lot sooner. It should have been a lot sooner. But also, as SpongeBob would say, what if there really is an issue <laughs> with my car's extended warranty? I've, I've had that fear more than once, but <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so scam callers, and though this one in particular, we're going to refer to in just a moment, could owe $300 million for just being an absolute piece of poop. Exactly. And that's not enough. They should be fine. Triple that at least. Uh, exactly. Well, this company made a staggering 5 billion scam calls over the course, John, yeah. of three months yeah. last year, which the agency notes is enough to have called each person in the United States 15 times. Yeah, yeah. And not to mention the emails and the texts that you get. And the and everything else that it's like and even mails I've had I've had regular snail mail that's open up and that's your car's extended warranty and look at all the cartoons that there are on the internet about that you know you you're up on Mars doing an exploration you crack open a rock and there's the message we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty and and it's just insane and people don't realize the extent of these these robocallers and all of these things where people just hammer this stuff out forever and ever and ever. And it's just talk about just pure harassment. And it's like, you know, our government has always promised that they're going to do things to stop this. First thing that happened, the government said, 
Uh, you know, there was, you'd be listening to a TV show and the, the TV show would be like, then the commercial comes on and it's like, oh my God, oh my God. And then the TV show comes back on, you can't hear the TV show. So the government says they're gonna fix that. No, they still haven't fixed that. There are still some channels, still sometimes the commercial comes on, you plug your ears. And then we started getting all these spam calls to the cell phones. And well, we're gonna fix that. We have the, um, what's, what's the thing you, you uh, the website you go to, and you enter your phone numbers and they're supposed to take it off all the telemarketing list. Did that with all my phone numbers. I get more scam calls to my phone numbers than ever no. before. Yeah. And then you've got idiotic junk like this. And so it's like, you know, all these things that the government is saying they're gonna to do to protect us, to change things, to make things better. It's just gotten consist consistently worse and worse and worse and worse. And, and it's not just this. Yeah, the Curiosity Rover probably gets those warning calls. I wouldn't doubt. And it, it's not just this. I was telling you, I think one time, I think it was you I was talking to, that, um, you know, the, the whole mindset of these predators out there is all this scamming. And when 911 occurred, within hours of 911, there were all these multiple fake websites set up to receive donations for the victims of 911 and this and the other. And now you can't trust any email or text or anything you get because all of these scammers have gotten so good that they'll take the official company logos, they'll spoof the company website page, they'll spoof the email addresses and everything else and send you this stuff and your accounts are drawn or this is a questionable charge you need to check this out don't ever click a link in any of those texts or email no, go to the don't. side of your credit card your bank or whatever log in and then see if there's anything there or call the number you that, that you know that goes to that because it's just rampant now i get things all the time from credit cards that i have that comes out from the official address with the official logos and everything else and no spelling mistakes no errors and uh and i know it's it's a scam i know it's not mine and you never have to open the, you never open these so it's well, just it's no it and it's come to the point that these scam calls scam texts scam emails have become so frequent yeah. that now most americans will not pick up the phone if it's an unknown number Right. Exactly. Um, be, because of situations like this, of course, mm -hmm. if you have a certain occupation where you got to pick up every phone call, yeah, that's different. But right. for people that don't are, don't use their phone for work where they have to pick up the phone, they're not going to pick it up mm -hmm. if they don't know the number. They said exactly. they, they can leave a voicemail. Yeah. And, yeah. and I have that same mentality. I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm not familiar with that phone number, I'm like, if it's important, They'll leave they'll a voicemail. Yeah. Exactly. Or if they know me, they'll text me. Yeah. I don't, exactly. I don't ever answer any number that I don't know. I don't ever pick up any number that I don't know. Ever. Never, no, never. No, no definitely. Never. Definitely just text. Yeah. yeah. Brian says, and thank you so much. It says, what part of Florida, John? I am due north of Panama City. Oh, we're uh, kind of central Florida, basically. Nice. Uh, sounds nice. I don't know. I don't even know the demo. Like I don't know anything about Florida. Just yeah. Orlando it's and and Disney World. It's a big swamp full of snakes and critters. Gators. And, and now gators. Uh, when I lived in uh, uh, the town previous to where we moved here, we had gators all around us in our neighborhood. There, we had these canals, and there were gators. This is a residential, well, established residential neighborhood, and there were gators in all these canals. It you had to constantly be watching out for them when you. We're out walking your dog or taking a walk yourself or this and the other. And uh, there was one, there's a, a photograph that I have our um, local news ran where the police, uh, the sheriff's department there uh, came downtown. There was a gator walking across the crosswalk downtown and they came and stopped all the traffic. And so the gator could walk across the crosswalk. And of course the joke was our gators in Florida are, are so sophisticated that they know to use the crosswalks. It was like, it was hilarious, but you would go like uh, there was a downtown, there was this huge shopping area with uh, stores, big box stores like Home Depot. And there was tons of restaurants and things around. And in one of those areas, they had all these retention ponds with water and fountains and everything. And on one of the big slabs where the fountain was, there was like a six foot gator out there laying on the thing right here in the middle of town. 
And uh, so, so Florida is still one big swamp and snakes haven't had as many since I've moved, but where I lived before, everything involved a snake. And there were, I killed more rattlesnakes here in Florida than my entire life growing up in West Texas. Uh, we have six venomous species here in, in Florida and I've seen all of them, had some of them in my yard. But the, the main thing that's uh, what's ubiquitous here are the black racers. And they are really tweaky and twitchy and high strung and super, super curious. And they love to try and get in your house. And I remember one time I was walking a little dog out in the backyard and the, the yard's constantly full of snakes. Everything you did involved a snake. And so there was this, this juvenile that was about a couple of feet long. And uh, he was out there just crawling around with me and the dog while I'm walking the dog and the dog didn't have any interest in him. And we start to go back inside the snakes. Oh, go inside. Me too. Good. Okay. And here he comes and he's like going up to the door with us. And I'm like, no. And I'm scooting him away with my foot and he comes back. Yes, me go too. And I'm like, no, <laughs> got to stay outside. And it's like, they, people here have tons of snake stories about snakes getting in their houses and the black racers are the worst. They love to get in garages. They love to get in your houses. I <laughs> That should be a car name first off. Sounds very awesome. But like yes. Racers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Snakes. Uh, no, which is really interesting, actually, is that on this show, Weekly Strange News, I almost always have an article about snakes. And it's it's almost always related to Florida. Yeah. As well, yeah. On yeah. top of that. And now I just saw on the news tonight before I came on with you, uh, the uh, the Florida Panthers here are beginning a surge northward now from South Florida. So we, and the city where I lived previously, we did have a panther roaming the neighborhood there for a while. So it was, uh, it's, it's different here. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty strange. Snakes. Uh, no, I, I don't mind them if they're over there, like yeah. <laughs> over there, but in, in not close. The, non, the non-venomous ones. I don't, I don't worry about the venomous ones. Of course I, I you know, kill, get rid of. Yeah, of course them. you got, you got to be careful, but you also got to yeah, be knowledgeable but, uh, on which ones even, are venomous and which ones aren't. I don't want them in the house because I don't want to be sleeping and the little racer goes, Oh, bed, uh, get up and cuddle. It's like, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. <laughs> so. Not today. So <laughs> moving on to our next article, John, do you have a preference? Let me see what we've got here. Hang on. We got one, two, three, oh, four the, more. See. We've got, uh, oh, let's look at the transparent glass frogs that vanish at night. Okay. I actually have the video for this. Oh, great, great. Which I, is want to, I want to see the video cool. and we'll talk about this. I have to see the video. Hold on. Oh, who hell is close. I thought I didn't save it, <laughs> but I saved it. <laughs> Hold on. Wait a second. Okay, but John, take us take us there while I figure this out. All right, let me take us there. Here we go. Uh, when a glass frog falls asleep, it vanishes. Nestled atop a lush leaf, the frog's bright green back blends right in while its underbelly's reddish line quickly grows transparent. Now, a new study in the journal Science reveals that the northern glass frog pulls off this, pulls off this feat by removing almost 90% of its red blood cells from circulation and packing them into its liver. The findings reveal how one of the only transparent land animals hides its blood. <laughs> so the, these glass frogs are, says professor of biology at Duke University in North Carolina, uh, th these glass frogs are by some process, we don't know the details, filtering red blood cells out of their blood and cramming them into their livers so tightly that it should create a clot, but it doesn't. Right? Isn't that isn't that amazing? If we could learn something like that, that we could apply to human beings, right? And maybe some type of blood treatment or something could be developed from that. There's all right. these amazing things to uh, to learn from nature that we're constantly discovering. And uh, it's just, it's, it's just incredible. It's bizarre. And wouldn't it be amazing if we could learn something like that to help people with blood diseases or 
you know. Uh, yes, yeah. that would be so cool. And for those listening to this on a podcast platform, jump over to YouTube so that you can see that video that I just showed. Uh, you can also find that video in the article link, which is in the description box below once this live show is over. But what's fascinating about this is that to our knowledge so far, this is the only animal that can move all of its blood cells into its liver. Like you... And it just right, right. it just swallows it up, yeah. and and that is fascinating. Now, at this point in time, the people conducting this research aren't really familiar on how these glass frogs are even able to do that. Yeah. So once they're able to figure out how these frogs are able to take in all of their blood vessels and put it in their liver from there they can begin to attempt to bring that knowledge with the human anatomy and right. help them with blood clots which is super darn cool and when it comes to glass frogs they have a very special place in my heart john because when i was younger i did not have a lot of friends so the way for me to make friends was to learn like really cool random facts there you go. and 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 hope that someone would be interested right interested, yeah <laughs> it, it, that or giving them free candy that also worked for a few days and then it didn't work after that but there was this one book that i came across it was by national geographic and there was actually like a, a whole few pages almost a whole chapter on glass frogs where wow. you're able to see all of the organs inside yeah. of this frog and that information blew my mind that some animals some amphibians have these trans this transparent skin yeah it's incredible it's really incredible and you know we're we have species we know species are going extinct all the time and yeah. what we also don't realize is that we're discovering new species all the time that's right so this is this is a pretty amazing planet that we live on and i i you know, I go back to, yeah, it's great that we can put a remote control helicopter on Mars, but I'd rather you take that money and let's spend, you know, spend that money on figuring out what's going on down here and helping people down here and investigating some of these incredible things. I think the money would be a lot better spent, you know, here, here back home, so to speak. In in some aspects, I totally agree with you. In other aspects, I'm like, but space is really cool and I want yeah everyone yeah, to explore true. space at the same time but yes you're absolutely right there's so many locations here on planet earth that have have yet to be discovered only yeah. about what 10 20 percent of our oceans have been mapped okay. that's still mapped 80, explore, 90 yeah. yeah that's still 80 90 percent that is unknown that yeah. we have no idea what monsters lurk in the oceans exactly exactly nessie could be there for all we know exactly right another version of nessie of course yeah. <laughs> not the nessie yeah. right but you get what i mean here's well, an image a lot of people that speculate that dinosaurs certain dinosaurs have not died out that there's some of the ancestors of the dinosaurs that have made it and continue to reproduce and people claim to see dinosaurs in various parts of the world so I'm, I'm in i want to go there right oh, me now too. me too absolutely but also making sure to bring like a ton of food so that if they're hungry they don't eat me right you know, but they eat bring the them we'll bring them some of those raw meat sandwiches and some pickled oh. candy canes <laughs> <laughs> cannibal sandwiches cannibal. as some people refer it to which i feel like that name <laughs> is incredibly accurate like it is spot on because oh my gosh mm. is that grody i'm so sorry john i just called that gross but it is so here's an image here oh from the article of the frog <laughs> sleeping and you're able to notice that you know you don't see any of its blood vessels and then yeah. here it is awake and you're able to see all of that um which is really really cool. mind-blowing it says what these frogs are doing is the equivalent of a human taking all their blood and stuffing it into a lunch bag inside their body and they said, how are glass frogs doing that? The cool thing is we just don't know. That's the best part. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, it is. Okay, so we have another scam article for you because when it comes to the holiday season, yeah, scamming is a big thing. But this is. one is actually not between strangers, but between friends. 
Oh, yeah. Let me find that. I remember that one. That was so bizarre. It is the third one on the list. Catfishing so, Deluxe. Oh, gosh. It's terrible. So yeah, here it is. Here it is. These yeah. two women in <laughs> China, in Shanghai, one of them pretended to be this amazing news anchor man and supposedly fell in love with the fr hold on let, let me pack it up because <laughs> it's not making any sense what i'm attempting to say but a chinese woman has been arrested for allegedly pretending to be a man on social media and tricking her own friend into falling in love with her and sending her money Yes. This interaction lasted 12 years. 12 These, years. 12 years. 12 I mean, years. Come on, I guys. Know, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you be like, I have to meet this guy in person? Or I <laughs> yeah, seriously. But 12 years of just years. kind of. So and the by, name. And by someone posing as a well known TV news anchor. Right. You would think. <laughs> You would just you would just stop you would just stop by to their office to to their to their newsroom right stop and be like right TV station and say hey I, I gotta see so and so here he's my boyfriend exactly for twelve years for 12 well years. the names that have been provided to us by the Shanghai police are Miss Lee and Miss Lu and <laughs> and over these twelve years Miss Lu scammed her childhood friend. Miss yeah. Lee, almost $300,000. Isn't that incredible? Just unreal. How and gullible do you have to be? If people are this well-known and they're making this, this good money, why would they need your money? It, exactly. You know? it's, like, it's like I always get tickled at the people that are catfished by someone posing as a celebrity. Now, celebrities right. are wealthy, why would celebrities need your money for anything? <laughs> it's like, I just, I don't get it. I don't get but it. But see, when, when love is blinding, as they say. So I, I guess, guess. I guess. So Miss Miss Lee was so in love with this catfish, right? right that she was like, whatever money you need, I got it for you. Well, it turns it. out that Miss Lee went fully in debt. She used up all of her savings to mm -hmm. help her friend slash imaginary boyfriend for 12 years. Yeah. There's not too much information regarding this case yet as the Shanghai police are still kind of understanding the whole situation. Yeah. But from, from what we understand, it's what we had just mentioned to you and, and, mm -hmm. But this whole money aspect of it apparently started back in 2018 when Miss Lou kind of fell into hard times and she was desperate of money. So that's where she began to ask for a lot more and yeah. then would threaten Miss Lee to say, hey, look, you're not going to give me money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut ties with you. That's it. Right. We're breaking up. Or instances like this. Now, of course, again, 12 years. How was this woman able to push away her friend? Which, at this point, you are not friends. You're not friends, yeah. You so somebody, not you're, friends. you're just, you're eating alive. You're a predator. You're taking advantage of them. And, and it always amazes me the excuses I will take. Because it says that, you know, every time, okay, I, I want to meet you. I want to see you. I want you to be with you, whatever. Well, I'm sick. I'm away on business. I have a meeting, whatever. How many, you took 12 years worth of those excuses and continued to send money. It's just, it's unfathomable. It's crazy. It, it's unbelievable. But I have, I, I won't go into too much detail. I have um, someone that I know that has just fallen for a celebrity catfishing scam. No, I'm yeah. so sorry. And it's like, are you kidding me? It's just like, look. And I was like, okay, have you talked to the celebrity face to face? No, it's through his people. He's communicating with me through his people. Uh huh. And I'm like, okay. And then here are the requests for money are going to come. And it's like, I was watching a Dr. Phil episode. My wife and I were talking about this. Like, oh my God, it's funny that came up because here on Dr. Phil, here's this woman that's in love with Tyler Perry and has been for all these years. And there's, a scammer that's been creating a fake profile for him and 
convinced her that he's, and now Tyler Perry, Dr. Phil have these statistics on, and it's something like Tyler Perry is worth like 600 million, 800 million, something like that. And yet the scammer is posing as Tyler Perry is saying, my jet broke down and I need $800 from you to fix my jet or I can't get to my next thing or whatever. Now, again, why does somebody worth 600 million need your $800? I always go back. Does anybody remember the Star Trek episode where supposedly God was wanting the enterprise and, and finally Kirk says, ask, ask this entity the question, what does God need with a starship? Why would God need a starship? And so it's like you have to ask yourself the same thing with these. Why would a, a multi-millionaire, world famous, need your 800 bucks? You know, come on. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. But it, it happens constantly. I mean, there's the show on TV, Catfish. Right? Exactly. So. It did really well. Yeah. Amazing. It's it's so sad. It. I mean, it there, is, there is, there is no excuse to do things like that. And if you're able to drag it out for 12 years, that's a skill. Sorry yeah. to break it to you. That's pretty yeah. impressive and terrible. And especially knowing that it was the friend doing this whole situation, not just some random stranger, that yeah. really puts some stakes in the heart. Exactly. Well, exactly. it turns out she is in prison now, yeah. um, to our understanding, because her friend filed a complaint you know, also claiming her to be a thief as well, which, yes, she definitely is stealing almost $300,000. Oh, wow. Listen to this in the chat. I visited a friend today who is paralyzed chest down in his left arm. He is convinced if he sends $500, the cast of NCIS will visit him. Oh, man. Bless his heart. Oh, man. I mean, there's there's just so many people out there that are, are so easy to take advantage of. And, you know, the, the police departments and the sheriff's departments warn you all year round, but especially this time of year around the holidays about the scams that people, um, you know, uh, propagate on others. And uh, it's well known that people will call and claim to be a police officer, a warrant officer, a detective or a sheriff or whatever. There's a warrant out for your arrest unless you send, you know, so much money in or or give us your credit card so we can get this off the docket or whatever and this and the other. And this goes on continuously. And unfortunately there's people out there that just, they hear that and they panic, you know, I can't remember how many IRS calls and how many IRS emails I got that were, you know, like uh, we're, we're fixing, we don't want to have to, you know, take your house and your car and your water pick and your shower massage, but we're going to, unless you, you know, settle you, your IRS debt. Of course, I didn't have any IRS debt, and I knew better to respond to any of them. So at first, I started reporting them, and then the IRS told me that they get so many of them, they can't keep up with them. They say, yeah, you can report them, but we can't basically do anything because as soon as we shut one thing down, they pop up somewhere else, and it just it just goes on and on and on. But, you know, people need to realize that anytime they get any kind of email or text or phone call or even a snail mail, anything else that proclaims to be anything like that, hang up, <laughs> call the sheriff's department, call the police department at their direct line and say, hey, you know, have I got a warrant out I don't know about or whatever, this, something, the other. Uh, don't don't mess with the cameras. Don't take the chances. Oh, no, there, there, there is no point in, in doing any of that. Just don't stress. If you get those calls, yeah. just hang up so quick yeah. and then do the research. Otherwise, you're going to have that stress level inside of you. You won't function throughout the day exactly. if you believe that stuff, yeah. which – some of these phone calls are real, uh, maybe like point point zero 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 one percent Exactly. <laughs> but to, just to put your mind at ease, do the research yourself yeah. when that situation happens. They, so even, we have, had a, they even had a, uh, a social security commercial that I saw just recently. And it says social what? security is not going to call you and threaten you or ask for money or suspend <laughs> your account or whatever. Oh, I got some of those too. Social security is fixing that to, to suspend your account. It's like, Oh my God, are you kidding me? So yeah. John aside, thank you so much. It says RV fun. I really enjoy the shows with John. Oh, thank me you so much. Appreciate it. Me too. Yeah, we got to keep that RV fun going. We got to get Christina out there on the hunt for Bigfoot and UFOs and everything else. And, Maybe maybe she'll head my way. We'll do a paranormal investigation together. Rock on. Well, I'll bring yeah. Puck. So we have we have time for one more article. And this one that I would like to cover is a gruesome find at a salt factory in Tennessee has yeah. sparked a murder investigation. 
<laughs> as as many of us know, um, the our, our regular viewers and listeners know that Jonicide actually works uh, for a salt factory. So <clears throat> Jonicide, oh, have, uh, yeah, I, I want to hear your version of the story. But in mid December of 2022, this is about too long ago, a human organ that appears to have been surgically removed from the body yeah. was found in a salt barn. <laughs> Operated by the Tennessee Department of Transportation, Hello. according, <laughs> right? I mean, and this, just to, to be very clear, this human organ was a heart. Yeah, how crazy is that? Nobody knows where the organ came from, why it was removed, or how it wound up buried in salt. After a preliminary examination, it was determined the organ belonged to an adult male. Additional DNA testing was anticipated. After the discovery was made, a murder investigation was announced by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. Referring to the find, Humphreys County Sheriff Chris Davis said via The Guardian, I've got 32 years in law enforcement. I do have to say this is probably in the top five of the most bizarre things that I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just imagine you're just like doing your job, you're doing your thing, and then you come across a human heart. What is this? Ah. <laughs> right? Like how how would you even react to that situation? Oh. Would you hide it? Would you call 911? Would you call your boss? Would you show would a you, friend? Would you take a bite of it? Oh my god. It might be pickle flavored and it's already salted, hey. <laughs> oh, terrible. Terrible. Well, when it comes to this account, so little information is available. Yeah. To our knowledge, the investigators have no idea where it came from. We, they don't know the body that it came from. They aren't familiar who committed the crime. Could it have been someone at the salt factory? Yeah. No Look one knows. This. Deranged lunatic. Mmm, salted heart just like mom used to make. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you can put some ketchup on it. <laughs> right, I just put sketty on it. Ketchup and Ketchup and butter. sketty and heart. <laughs> so oh my, this show has taken a turn. <laughs> For the morbid. For the morbid. <laughs> sure has. But it is a strange article that was just recently posted, and this is Strange Weekly News. So, of it course, is. we have to cover it. That's right. It's apropos. It's apropos. Well, that's like people that have found fingers in canned food when they've opened them. And things. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there have been a few incidences of people opening up a can of food, and there would be a, a finger inside, and no. they speculated that the, that the plant, the person's finger get cut off and somehow got into the can or whatever like no see i've i've seen i've seen images of people getting like fast food and they'll find like a cigarette butt in their right. hamburger or like sometimes jewelry there was this one image that i came across a while back through social media and it was a pregnancy test and i'm like oh. how is that even how is that even possible i i cannot comprehend that but Finding fingers in like tin food? No. Yeah. Oh, I feel bad for that person. They're never gonna get their finger back. I was at a restaurant one time and I bit into something hard and I pulled it out of my mouth and it was you know the screens that go in your faucet that no. filter. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those in my food and it was like, um, dude, I'm not paying for this meal. <laughs> so, no. Okay. Well, I'm talking about <laughs> restaurant stories. I have one. We have a few minutes left, so okay. I went to a Vietnamese restaurant many years ago with my dad mm -hmm. and um, they had like, they gave us teacups and started beginning to order because we had ordered some tea. Right. They were all turned, like it was the cup and then the plate. So you weren't, you weren't able to see anything inside. Yeah, the cup's upside down, yeah. Right, right. We pick up the cup and there was a dead cockroach in that. Excellent. And did, you, did you put pickle juice and ketchup on it? <laughs> We just kind of like wave, waved at the uh, waitress and we're like, hey, can we have another cup, please? And that would be fantastic. Thank you. And we still continue to eat there. But it was we never returned after that. Yeah. Like that is 
disgusting. It was a defining moment. Yeah, that was like, okay. I mean, luckily it wasn't in our food, just yeah. in a, in a teacup, yeah. which isn't too big of a deal. But I was like... And of course, of... there are all these places that where people eat bugs, you know, like fry bugs and eat bugs, so... You know, it's it's a thing, but I don't. This one wasn't even cooked. It, it came, it came, came right raw. off. Yeah, it came raw, probably full of gross viruses and God knows you what. So gotta wonder, you gotta wonder if there was somebody in the back going, "Watch this, watch this, watch their faces when they open this." Up. Yeah, we we were surprised. That there, yeah. there was there was no doubt there, but. John, that is all the time. No, no, we ha we have a few minutes left. There's one more story that you have for us. I wrote it down on my brand new post-its. Ah. And it's about telekinesis. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's I have a lot of telekinesis stories, but we're running out of time. So uh, I will I will tell the uh, the quickest one I can. And it was actually a um, kind of a remote thing where I told this buddy of mine, and this buddy of mine, he's he's seen me do things. He's seen things happen in my presence that have just totally freaked him out. But then he kind of gets a little blase and he's like, well, I don't know. So he needs jolting every now and then to kind of stay in the belief system. So I told him one time, I said, I'm going to send some energy down to your house. He lives in several states away. And I said, I'm going to send some energy down to your house. And there's going to be some physical phenomena that occurs that you will know this energy has arrived and that this has happened supernaturally. He's like, yeah, okay, whatever. So sure enough, this, this house he uses for his office, he has a residence house and then a house he uses for an office and he keeps it locked up. Nobody else has the keys. Nobody else goes in there. So he went in the next morning to open up and to make himself some coffee. And he went into the kitchen and the refrigerator had been pulled out about a foot away from the wall. And he said, okay, your energy showed up. You can stop now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's all manner of, of energy you can send and things that you can do and people can experience it and uh it uh it's it's an interesting thing Jeez. um <laughs> chris just wrote a comment and says my uncle found a mouse in a shredded wheat all bailed up oh excellent <gasps> with pickle juice and ketchup you got to at, at, at this point in time john put ketchup on everything with the everything. side of pickle juice everything. come on a shot of pickle juice with some ketchup on the bacon it's like... yeah. <laughs> i love it this has been a great show <laughs> john thank you so much for being on the show uh, today where can <laughs> Where can people find you online? Go to johnrussell.net and you'll find out more about me than you ever wanted to know. So, And his <laughs> links are below in the description box. And John, I'm going to... My books, if you want to get my books, I've got links at johnrussell.net and, and so on and so forth. So, Christina, Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year, everybody in the chat. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Appreciate being here. Appreciate everyone tuning in. And uh, we're doing it again in January. Heck yeah, we are. Yeah. John, I'm going to let you go. Hang tight backstage, okay? Okay. Good night, everybody. God bless. What an interesting show today. I did not think we were going to cover some topics in detail. Out of all of the news articles that we covered today, which one was your favorite? I think for the holiday season, talking about these weird flavored candy canes, that one was my favorite. And actually, it reminds me of one of the articles that we covered a few months back now about dumpling flavored soda. It had it tasted like vinegar, ginger, but also like a, a, a touch of sweetness. Disgusting. Would I try it? Absolutely, I would. I love dumplings. Now, as for these candy canes, you probably know I would not pick the pickled ones, unlike John. But the, the, the faux or pho, as some say, yes totally would want to buy those but they were sold out i'm sad i would like to mention that for next week's shifting the paradigm on tuesday it's actually going to be a live stream 2022 roundup where i will talk about some of the most impressionable interviews and shows that i've done as well as a review of dave politis new documentary missing 411 
the UFO connection, which John and I briefly touched on today. So make sure that you have the notification bell switched on. Steppenwolf, thank you so much for supporting the RV fund. I deeply appreciate it. I would also like to mention that I do now have my own channel for space ambient music called Cosmic Portals. I think you're going to love it. It's really awesome. I will share that link in the live stream shortly. That is it for today's show. I'll see you next time. Be safe. And remember, keep your eyes on the skies.